from Sir Robert Borden High School, I am Ann Kazam. This is the Summary of Freakonomics Podcast. Today, we will be talking about how the KKK are like real estate agents. How can this be? You are about to find out. The first thing you must know is that information is power. And you know who knew that pretty well? A certain group who hated everyone who wasn't them. No, I'm not talking about mean girls. I'm talking about the largest hate group in American history with a peak of 8 million members in the 1920s. I'm talking about the American white supremacist hate group, the KKK. At the time, the group cast fear in the hearts of every black person in the United States. And there was no one fighting it. Until a man named Stetson Kennedy, a past folklorist, used the adventures of Superman to eradicate them from society. So yeah, Superman basically saved the world from the KKK. But Stetson Kennedy was the man behind it all. Kennedy began writing about the KKK in a black journal. And... It didn't really do anything. So he got his pal, John Brown, to infiltrate Klan meetings and get him information. But plot twist. He never gave Brown the credit for it. But Kennedy's plans were still not working. The Klan was simply too powerful. So Kennedy thought of a little clever plan to broadcast all of the KKK secrets to an adult radio show, The Washington Merry-Go-Round, and a children's TV program, The Adventures of Superman, who would soon spill them to the entire United States every single day. And guess what happened? Superman defeated evil once again, and the KKK began to fall. But you may be asking yourself, how did a group formed on the basis of hating everyone grow to be so successful? It is because information is power. The KKK trafficked secret information whose secrecy engendered fear. As the free economist, I mean, the economist who wrote the book, Mr. Levitt once said, or wrote, information is so powerful that the assumption of information, even if it does not actually exist, can have a sobering effect. So naturally, this brings us to the subject of real estate agents. They basically have a ton of information on houses that we don't. Recent sales trends, the housing market, interested buyers, etc. So naturally, we trust them to price our houses perfectly at a not too high, not too low level, just the Goldilocks level. False. Real estate agents don't actually care. They only take 1.5% of the sale of every house they sell. So what does that mean? 10000 of your dollars means only 150 for them. So they just don't work as hard, which makes them bad people. False. As humans, we are driven by incentives. The agent's incentive in this case is to make money for themselves. So why should they care to make money for you? No reason. Well, so anyways... Through more examples with TV shows, dating sites, and voting in Chapter 2 of Freakonomics, the Ku Klux Klan, and Real Estate Agents, we learn that incentives are the cornerstone of modern life, and understanding them is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. And so is 42. Thank you for listening. Psych! This podcast is not over yet. 
What's a catfish? How do catfishes relate to online daters? In this duo episode of Freakonomics, a summary, I and Kazam will uncover the truth of online daters. So, what's a catfish, you may ask? Or, you may also ask, assuming many of the people who use internet dating sites are not being truthful when they describe themselves, what could motivate them to do so, knowing that if they ever actually met a date face-to-face, the truth would likely come out? Question 15 of the HarperCollins Student Guide to Freakonomics. So, what is a catfish, anyway? A uh, Siluriformis from the Kingdom Animalia, or more commonly known as catfish, is from a diverse group of raven fish. Uh, A catfish also means to create a false impression of yourself online. Some catfishes take it to the extremes and create entirely fake profiles of themselves. Today, we are lucky enough to have a real catfish on live with us today. Hello, Adam Smith. What is your name? Warwick Cross. Oh, shoot. I mean, Adam Smith. Damn it. Warwick, you can't fool me. Now, tell me about your fake personality and why you chose to do this. Well, in the world of catfishes, while most people think we create fake personalities to lure people for money, although I do this quite often, it doesn't even compare to how often I do it for affection. All I really want is affection. I'm also quite insecure about my looks. And I'm married as well with three kids. I didn't want Ashley to know that. Oh, how emotional. Now, tell me about your fake personality versus your real one. Well, for starters, as I said before, I'm married and everything, but I'm also pretty broke. I don't actually make $300,000 a year. Uh, how much do you make? About 50 k I also live in the States and have a criminal record. Okay, Warwick, I'm just going to cut you off there uh, cause we're, you know, we're uh, recording. Um, I have one more question for you. What will happen with Ashley once the truth comes out? Huh? Oh, uh, I didn't really think about that. They normally start yelling at me and drive away angrily. Yeah, once the car, they, once they crash the car, when I... War- Warwick! Okay, uh, thank you for coming on with us, and good luck with Ashley. Thanks, no problem. Little does Warwick know, I'm about to interview Ashley. Hey, Ashley! <laughs> oh, I guess she, uh, saw Warwick. Oh, that's too bad. Okay, bye. <laughs> um, bye, Warwick. Hello, <laughs> that's the best reaction I've had yet. Oh, shoot. I'm going to be next. I'm going to be late for my next date with Betty. Boop. Got a blast. Well, fellow podcast listeners, I think the most valuable lesson we've learned from all of this is to be cautious with our use or misuse of statistics. When statistics are used in a misleading fashion, they can trick the casual observer into believing something other than what the data shows. So basically just don't lie. But that is easier said than done. Because look how easy it is to fool people. Hey, kid. Yeah? Did you know that almost one in two people suffer from bullying at school every day? No way. Did you know that nearly one out of ten people take prescription drugs because of the harmful environment they're exposed to at school? Drugs? Did you know that teachers could have very harmful effects on students and that 65% of teens say teachers negatively impact them? Really? You know what that means? That you should never go to school again. Okay. I'm never, ever going to go to school again. Perfect. See? It was that easy. Misleading statistics are used everywhere in the internet and on the media. Why? Because they're successful. Everyone believes them. Falling for these false statistics or fake news doesn't mean that we're stupid. It's just that humans have an innate desire for easy answers. So my advice to you is just don't believe anything. Just kidding. Just believe carefully and skeptically. Hey, kid, come back. School's actually good for you. Okay. And that is all for today's podcast on the Summary of Freakonomics, Chapter 2. Make sure to like our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, and give us 100% on our assignment. Thank you for listening.